you guys, I see so many familiar faces, and I want to apologize in advance. I'm not great with names, but I see all the familiar faces, and it's very exciting. So I don't need to introduce myself uh, and my background. Um, I was asked for the uh, the uh, bio, and I was like, you know, I think I know a lot of folks here. So, but anyway, um, thank you for having us. I appreciate uh, your support and and uh, working with LifeBridge and allowing God to bless the, the hurting teens in the area of Dover uh, through you all. So thank you. Um, I want to start with scripture, and um, our scripture this morning is in Galatians. Uh, so if you want to turn in your Bibles to uh, chapter 5, um, verses 22 through 25, I'll give you a minute to get there. Um, this is, as we know, uh, the fruit of the Spirit. I want to read it so we can kind of... Uh, refresh our minds on what the fruit of the Spirit is, um, and then um, hopefully I can help you obtain it, because <laughs> um, we seem to miss it a lot, I think, in our regular lives. So it's uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 25, and I'll read it for you. Um, I'll try to read it slow, slowly. Um, verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Let me read that one again. Self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. So it tells us how to do this. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. But we also often forget this. So um, thank you for bearing with me in that. And let me just pray for us and ask God's blessing on today. Father God, we just give you this beautiful morning and we give you our hearts and our minds. And we just ask that we would get out of the way and we'd stay out of the way. And Lord, that you would bless us with what you're trying to teach us. Speak boldly through me. Help me to not muck this up, Lord. Um, as I tend to do, and I pray, Father, for your blessing on our time together. Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen. So, does everybody know what a byproduct is? Ever heard of a byproduct? Are you clear on what it is? You know, we set set out to manufacture something. We're going to produce something. And then maybe there's some byproducts on the the side. So let me give you the Webster's definition of a byproduct. So Webster's, uh, there's actually a, a, another name in there, Webster, Miriam, or I don't know where that came from. It's always been Webster's Dictionary for me. But the Webster's definition is something produced in a usually industrial or biological process in addition to the principal product. So you get the principal pot product, and when you're trying to work on that, you end up developing something else. That's a byproduct. So why is that important? Let me give you some examples of some byproducts that um, I think are interesting. Uh, Back in the day, 100 years ago or so, they were trying to find a cure for addiction to morphine. And so in the process of, you know, developing the, you know, what they thought would be the cure, they ended up developing Coca-Cola. They're out there trying to, yeah, they're out there trying to develop wallpaper. And nobody really uses wallpaper anymore. But in the day, that was the beautiful thing. You know, you got nice wallpaper. So they're coming up with all these crafty ways to develop wallpaper. And uh, they ended up uh, developing bubble wrap, which is a byproduct of wallpaper, what they're trying to, to develop. Another one is the Navy were trying to figure out how to stabilize their equipment on the boat so they slosh back and forth. They kind of needed something to keep that electronic equipment stable. And so they developed this spring-looking thing like your glasses uh, called the slinky. So the Navy developed the slinkies. Um, and that was a byproduct of what they were ultimately, what they were trying to develop. <clears throat> and by, uh, bear with me one more. Um, there are a lot of folks suffering with bipolar, bipolar, and they didn't really understand, you know, about it so much. They were trying to develop a treatment for bipolar, and they ended up developing 7-Up. Soda. So uh, it's kind of cool how byproducts are pretty awesome. But I just wanted to give you an, a framework of what, you know, a typical byproduct would be. And then I'm going to make it a little more relational. This, for me, is what byproducts, you know, what, what I hold to. And I, I just experienced this uh, a couple weeks ago with my family. We went camping. And any parent in here that's gone camping knows that is supposed to be a lot of fun. 
and it's supposed to be relaxing, enjoyable, and it's a lot of work. It's dirty. You don't sleep very well, all that kind of stuff. So I went into it having done it before. My wife and I were like, oh, boy, a week. We Last time we tried to do a week, it ended up two, three days. We were like, we're done. This was a week of camping we're heading into. And so my goal should be, and all of ours should be, is to love my family. My, my primary product would be to love my wife, love my children, love them. But somehow, in, in the transition, I, I make setting up camp as my primary goal. And so I start focusing on that. Like, get out of my way. I'll do it. I'm sweating like crazy. You want help? No, I don't need help. I'll put this tent up. I'll get this. And it turns out nobody feels loved. I'm angry and frustrated and de- dehydrated, usually. Um, and so I let my secondary goal take over of my primary goal. And what happened this time is if I focused, which is what I tried to do, is loving my family. Man, everybody kicked in. Everybody's putting up the tarps. Everyone's setting the tent. We had the best time camping because we focused on our primary goal and let go of the other stuff and trusted that's going to happen. So that's my personal example of, you know, where I'm going today. So at some point, most likely when you're driving out of here and you're thinking, what was he trying to say? What in the world is he trying to say? He was tall, dark, and handsome, that's for sure. <laughs> but what point was he trying to make? <laughs> Thanks for laughing. Uh, <laughs> What point was he trying to make? This is the point I'm trying to get across. Um, get across to you. There's no T on the end of that one, but I do it anyway. Um, when we keep our eye on our primary goal, which is to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, when we do this, all the other byproducts fall into place. And that's what I want you to remember. Keep your eye on the ball. Keep your focus on God. It's not about performance. It's not about the way you look or you act or you dress or, you, you, you know, Perform. It's not, it's keep your eye focused on Jesus and everything else will fall into place. So that's a simple version. That's what I'm trying to get to you today. And hopefully I'll do an okay job at that. Um, let's go to the Bible to find out what, are there some, is this a biblical concept? You know, um, focusing on the primary product, focusing on, uh, your primary goal versus entrusting God with the outcome. So I'm going to go to Matthew. Uh, where am I? Matthew 6, verse 33. You can go there if you'd like. Um, I've got some pretty cool bookmarks, these sticky notes that I keep it uh, keep the book open to. But I'm going to go to uh, Matthew 6, chapter 6, verse 33. And this, again, is something we've all heard before. But again, in an annoying way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pound it into your head one more time. Um, verse 33. You know, this is Jesus talking, and he's saying, But seek, seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. So we cruise along with that, like, that's a feel-good statement, but that's reality. That's a, that's a biblical truth. That he's saying, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. He literally says that a few verses beforehand. Jesus himself, our Lord and Savior, says, don't focus on that stuff. Focus on, seek God, seek the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and everything else is going to fall into place. So your primary product is to seek the kingdom. The byproducts are going to be, you know, your food. You're, you're going to get that stuff. It's going to come. Trust God with that. So that's a, that is a big biblical uh, perspective, and there's some other examples, but I'm not going to jump into them. Uh, what I'm going to look at is well, what does this have to do with, and I didn't see it in the bulletin, but it might be in there. The title of this message was, um, you know, the, a day in the life of a mentor, something like that. So if it's in your bulletin, great. What does that have to do with, what I just shared about byproducts. Um, and so that's one of the main thread within our ministry is to help the brother, help our brothers and sisters kind of keep their eye on the ball. Because we, I know in my life, but most of us, we get all tripped up on these alternative, to, these other goals that we have. Um, and then how does that play out with a, an at-risk kid, a kid who's struggling? So um, I'm going to tell you another story about a mentor um, I changed their names a little bit. Uh, they don't go to this church. The mentor doesn't. Uh, he actually goes to a church up in Ospi. But it, we're going to call him Steve, and the mentee is Bobby. Bobby was a 12-year-old boy, uh, cute kid, little kind of kid. Um, he uh, oldest of three. My daughter, daughter, are you counting how many times I say um? Hey, Carly? No? No, she did the last time. Um, so um, Bobby is... Uh, He's, a, he's 12 years old. He's the oldest of three boys. 
He's very polite, sweet kid. The guidance counselor said, I'm really concerned for this kid. His mom's a single mom. There's a lot of chaos going on. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure he has a solid male role model in his life. So we got him a mentor. And his mentor, he, by the way, he's a great kid. I said that already. Um, his mentor, Steve, was a 65-year-old man, came to the Lord maybe 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. Um, and, he, you know, he's a good-looking guy, very smart, very relational um, he married a Christian woman, and that's how he became a believer through that process. Uh, so here he is down the road in his walk and his journey. And um, uh, he, he ran a bunch of auto parts stores. And so he relationally, he know he can interact with people. But here we come along. He wants to mentor our kid because he has a passion in his heart to make a difference. And he thinks he understands relationship. And he rum, rubs up against us and goes, whoa, this is a different relationship. This is different. So he starts mentoring this kid, and he is admitted in his own mind and to me through this process. He's like, i got a lot to learn about relationship. How do I love this kid? Because he's already raised some boys, and he's got it in his mind stamp. This is how you do it, kind of. This is, you know, you can screw this up, and it's going to be okay. Um, but what we're asking to do is un- uh, unconditionally love this kid and not control the circumstances. And he feels like a fish out of water. So he goes down that road with me. Um, and he's looking at stuff like, um, I'm looking at a chart that we have in our, our training. He's looking at like social skills, social skills. This kid's horrible social skills. You know, eating with his hands and maybe some foul language here and there. You know, his, his grades aren't great. His hygiene is not really good. Um, he's got some negative behavior. There's some stuff going on in the family he's picked up on that's not really helpful for a kid to succeed. His attendance isn't very good at school. So that's what he's seeing. But he's got me talking about focus on his heart. You know, under, listen to him and understand his feelings. Recognize his gift and, gifts and talents. Support him. Be a caring adult in his life. Care for him. Good, identify his good qualities and bring those up and talk about those things. So that's different. There's like a big, you know... Uh, divide between the twos, to the twos. And so one column is the primary goal is to love this kid. The other column is secondary goals, growth. And we always shoot for growth. We're always honing in. I need to see this kid show some positive growth. I want to see their behavior change. I want to see them. And, and I'm telling you, these are the messages we get. My kids get it at, at camp. I love this camp. They get it at my church. I love my church. They get it from me. Behave. Sorry. Believe behave, be saved. That's what they hear. But really what God says is, believe, be saved, and then behave. Your behavior will change because of what I'm doing in you. But what we all hear is, you need to believe and then change your behavior, and then you'll be saved. You're going to be okay. And so that's a message that's subtle, and we keep communicating to that. So what we're trying to get our mentors to do is help them see, you've got to focus on loving this kid. Be who God says you are. And trust that God's going to change these things over time. So let's bring it back to mentoring um, a little little closer. So I'm wondering if you could show a slide somewhere behind me. I love this slide. This is directly out of our training manual. Um, and, you know, you can read the words. on. The, if you can, I'll read them for you if you're not wondering. The, the title is Just Be With Them. Instead of doing something with them, just be with them, Right? Maintain perspective, and this is the perspective that our mentors need to keep. God brings the fruit, not us. I'm not in charge of the fruit. God is. Um, It's a marathon, not a sprint. It's not your timeline. It's God's timeline. Um, Success equals faithfulness, not results. Um, So the success is marked, are you faithful to God and who he's calling you to be? Uh, That marks success. God is a dependence. It's a must. You can't fix it. And it tells you to pray, pursue, and ask others to pray. But really what I like about this slide and the point of this slide is is I love this picture because I, I look, to me, you know, I make a big deal out of nothing. That's a picture. That's a field, you know, beautiful green field with a road going through it. But I look at that as life. Like I look at that road as life, and it's up and down, up and down. And if you think about a mentor or a believer, one of us, during our life, we're going to be on that road. And if we believe in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, he's going to make your path straight, get it? But there's a lot of ups and downs on that road. You're going to run into challenges, struggles. You're going to run into people, people you love, people you don't like. Uh, all kinds of stuff's going to happen on this journey called life. 
So we're going to walk this path. And so um, let me just... The key to, to um, being faithful is keep your eye on the ball. And so I don't like formulas, um, although this feels good because I'm in, you know it speaks to the engineering me. Um, we put up three kind of principles, a formula, if you will, how to walk this journey, walk this road of called life, because we're all here, we're not of the world, we're in it. And what is God calling us to do? Um, because ultimately we want to experience the, the uh, fruit of the Spirit, right? Well, how do we do that? This is going to bring us there. Number one, have the correct understanding of who God says you are. Know your true identity. So as you walk down this road on this journey and you run into these struggles, your foundation has to be, you've got to know who you are as a child of God. And so we've got some bookmarks out there, out back. So after the service, you can grab them from Freedom in Christ Ministries. Uh, this one actually is on joy, how to maintain joy. But uh, the ones out back are, have uh, scripture on who God says you are as a child of God. It's very much truth about who you are. Um, and it comes from Freedom in Christ Ministries. Please grab one on your way out. I love that bookmark. Um, you know, Neil Anderson, Dr. Anderson suggests that you read through it every day and, you know, meditate on those verses, those biblical truths. But uh, for our mentors, they need to know who they are. They need to understand that, number one, they're accepted. Number two, that they're secure. Nobody can hurt them. And number three, that they're significant, that they're very important, they have value. So that's the exact message we're trying to communicate to our mentees. Number one. The kid has to be accepted. Number one, your neighbor has to be accepted. Number two, they got to know that they're secure, that they're okay, they're safe with you, that they can make a mistake. And number three, that you value them, that they're significant. Um, so as you're walking down this road, as our mentors are going down the road, the number, the number two step is to know your mission. Who are, uh, why are we here? What's our purpose on this journey? And so then again, that goes back to our irreducible core, and we touched on part of it this morning, uh, Matthew 28. If you back up a few chapters to Matthew 22, um, it says, love God, number one, love others, number two, and then make disciples as you go. That's our irreducible core as an organization. You've heard this before. Um, But that's number two in the list of the mentor. Number one, they need to know who they are. Number two is they got to know what they're doing. And what they're doing as they walk along this road is they need, to, they need to keep their eye on God. And their mission is to love God, number one, love others, number two, and make disciples as they go. So the third step in this formula um, is understand the method. Well, how are we going to do that? Everyone has a different method. If I'm in the airport, I'm gonna be, my method is going to be handing out tracts, talking to people, you know, re- reaching people for Christ. If I'm in a relational ministry like LifeBridge and it's about living out your faith authentically, I'm going to understand the method that we're going to do this. And this method is very similar to what we've talked about. And if we're going to trust God with the outcome and understand that we're not the Savior. Understand success equals faithfulness. I'm used to a lot of questions, and, and so now I'm like realizing I'm steamrolling here. I've got to slow down a bit. Um, but uh, don't, for, don't get wrapped in, up in all the byproducts of the Christian walk. Focus on God and his things. I'm sorry, focus on God, not his things. And so if you think about um, uh, fasting, a lot of mistakes that I've made, but a lot of mistakes a lot of us make, is we focus on the, the benefits of fasting over focusing on God. And so um, that's another example. Um, when So I believe that God wants us to live a victorious life. And I, I think he wants us to know how to get there. And what I'm trying to say is the, um, the way to get to these fruit of the Spirit is to keep God as your focal point. And don't get tripped up over our ulterior goals, our secondary goals, um, like behavior or cleanliness. The guy has a dirty yard, and that's, that's a hurdle for us. No, just go and love him and respect him. Um, let's go back to the, the Bible here. So this whole concept of life and, um, um, you know, how much joy should we have, how much, you know, 
fruit of the Spirit should we experience? And if you look at uh, John chapter 10, verse 10, um, he talks about that a little bit. Um, John 10.10, 10. I, I want to read that to you if I could. Um, this, came, this popped up on my cell phone, on my Bible app a week or two ago. And I was like, whoa, if you really pay attention in this verse and you, you, uh, you meditate on it, it's an awesome, awesome verse. So let me just read it out loud. Uh, the thief comes only to still, steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So he really, Jesus defines um, what the enemy's trying to do. He literally says, steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus is making it clear to us. He came that we would have life. He is the author of life, right? But how much life should we have? Abundantly. Abundantly. God's heart for us is that he wants us to have life abundantly. And it's the same with that your neighbor. Same with your the kid you're mentoring. Um, another verse, and you don't have to go there if you don't want to, is John 15, 11. Um, I love these verses. They're just really awesome. Um, So he's saying, these things I have spoken to you that, may, that, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Not just simple, eh, I'm kind of happy. Full joy. So if we go back, and you don't have to and I'll read it, but the fruits of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. So in closing, I just want to revisit why I'm here and why I shared uh, this. is uh, when, When we take our eye off the goal, we start looking at other people's behavior. And we need to keep our eye on our primary product. We need to, number one, love God. You've got to keep your eye on the ball and trust that the other things are going to fall into place. When you're dealing with your spouse, when you're dealing with your kids, when you're dealing with your in-laws, or your, you know, and it gets messy because it is going to. That road is going to be rough. Um, when it does, just keep your eye on Jesus. Keep your eye on God and trust him with the outcome. Understand your identity, who you are in Christ. Understand what it means to be a child of God. And, and you're secure, and everything's going to be fine. Thank you guys for your time this morning. Thank you for blessing LifeBridge the way you have. Please come and see us after the service. Like uh, Richard had said and Lori had mentioned, we need mentors. We need mentors. We cannot do this without the body of Christ stepping up to do this. Uh, thank you. That's what it's like to be a mentor, and thank you so much.